Today we are debating Flat Earth and we are starting right now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thrilled to have you here for this epic debate on the shape of the earth it's going to be a fun one folks very exciting stuff want to let you know if it's your first time here consider hitting that subscribe button as we've got a lot more debates coming up so for example on the bottom right of your screen you will see none other than david wood and matt dillahunty as they will be debating in person we will be at the atheist experience studio filming their debate on the foundations of morality, whether that be God or secular humanism, it's going to be epic, folks. And also, if you haven't heard, if you're tuning in because you love T-Jump, the guy that you see on the right, he's also got an upcoming debate that's going to be epic. That is, on the bottom right of your screen, Tom Jump versus his father, Steve McRae. It's going to be, it's like a family dynasty. It's going to be dramatic. Father versus son. We are very excited for that one as well. But anyway, folks, we are excited for tonight's debate. It's going to be a lot of fun. Very flexible, basically eight minute opening statements or so from each speaker with Billy, our flat earth guest going first, then Tom with a short opening statement as well, and then open conversation. If you have a question during that conversation, feel free to fire it into the old live chat. And if you tag me with an at modern day debate, that makes it easier for me to not miss it. Also, just so you know, both of these gentlemen, I have put their links in the description. So that way, if you're listening, you're like, hmm, I want more of that. Well, good news, those links are waiting for you just down there in that little description box just for you. So with that, Steve, or I should say Billy, as I had mentioned, is going to go first. So thanks so much for being with us for the first time, Billy. And I don't know if everybody knows, but for Billy, it's actually daytime as he is far across the globe. I mean, the planet. So thank you, Billy, for being here. <laughs> Hi, James. Glad to hear. Uh, glad to have you here. Oh, thank you. I'm, so I'm just going to ignore this screen because I've got a bit of a delay. So I just don't want to um, get put off by the screen. But yeah, thanks for having me here. And who would have thought that in 2020 we would be talking about the the shape of the earth? We all thought this was solved many years ago, obviously. And um, that's that's why a lot of us get rather triggered when we hear this topic, you know. Um, yeah, glad to be here. And I, I see MC Toon just made a comment about you know, you need something like eighth grade science. It's pretty cool. Good, good comment. And 
isn't that just the typical rhetoric we hear when we first hear about this discussion? And a lot of people continue with it. Um, I've invited people from around the world in a, in a new, um, um, ex, call it an experiment or an event that I've put together called Test the Curve Day 2020. What that's about is I'm trying to encourage people on the 21st and the 22nd of March, coming in about you know 10 days' time, to get out and test the curve on their own, do their own experiments. Um, as I said, we, we all thought this topic was solved many, many millennia ago. You'll hear people say it was solved two and a half thousand years ago. Funny enough, they didn't even have the technology to prove it. And, and here we are now with advanced technologies that we're getting varying results to what they to what they had. So, you know, sticks and shadows and observations over a, over the horizon just with the bare naked eye is not good enough. And that's why we're here, um, because those assumptions they made obviously influenced many other assumptions along the way, many other calculations that continued based on a on an R value, a radius of this earth. And I've been looking for about five years now and I can't find this radius. So I'm keen to have a discussion with Tom and see if you can prove that the the earth is spherical and I can go back to my old life and be a ball earther and I'll, I'll join your camp. You prove it, I'll join your camp. I write a new book and and I'll, you know, I'll be the biggest advocate on your side. So I want to I'm gonna let Tom go for it now. You I know bet. it's not eight minutes, but that's all that's right. That's cool. Yep. As much as you want to use or as little as you want to use. Thanks so much Thank for you. that, Billy. Right. We, I will. Glad to have you here. And so, same thing for Tom. He doesn't have to use the whole eight minutes, as he usually doesn't. But if he wants, it's up to him. Thanks for being here as well, Tom. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, we know the world is a globe because we can see it. We literally bend to space, and we can just turn around and look. We have pictures from satellites. Which we can take a telescope and we can look and see the satellites that take the pictures and we can see the pictures from those satellites and confirm that they're real and we can see the international space station so we know it's there and we can see all the satellites that the different countries have sent we know they're there and it's pretty ridiculous to think that every single country is in on some grand scheme to hide the fact that the world is actually flat for no reason there's there's absolutely no reason why they would all do this especially since they all hate each other so if there was actually some like one fact that they could all get right and be like superior over all the others, like if China could say, oh, the world is flat and they would be more right than America, they'd do it. But they didn't because it's not. The Russians were the first ones to send the first object to space, which was Sputnik. And the Russians and the Americans just hate each other. So if the Americans could just say, no, the world's actually flat, and so Sputnik was a lie, they would have done that. I mean, they hated the Russians. They wanted to beat the Russians in every single way. But they didn't because it's not. I mean, we can we can demonstrate it's clearly there is space and clearly the world is round. All of the math works. The way to send a, uh, satellites to space requires that it's a globe Earth. And to get it into orbit requires it's a globe Earth. And all the math required works for the globe Earth model. And all of the communication time between the satellites in space to Earth are on globe Earth math and general relativity, and they work. And there are no alternatives. Like the alter alternative, whatever you want to propose, just doesn't work. Only the globe math works to get these satellites into space, to get the calculations to work for the communication with the satellites, for calculation for objects in space and where they're going to go and how fast they're going to travel. All of that is just all globe earth math and general relativity spectral relativity newtonian mechanics those kinds of things it's all just the globe model that works there isn't an alternative like if you wanted to say that the flat earth was a valid alternative you'd have to create an alternative kind of mathematics that can do everything that the globe models can do as well or better which you can't which is a problem and then you need to make novel testable predictions to show that if my model is correct then we can predict this new thing that we no one knows yet that the globe earthers don't predict and that only we can and we get it right and they don't. That's how science works. It's all about novel test predictions. Everybody has a hypothesis. The one that can make novel test predictions is the one that's right. The globe earth has done that numerous times over and over and over again, which is why we know it's right. You know, and the fact that we can literally see it. So 
we have pretty resoundingly solid evidence that the world is a globe, like absolute certainty kind of levels. It would It's like rejecting evolution or rejecting that germs cause disease or rejecting that atoms um, create radiation. Like all of these are just facts of reality. We know them with like absolute certainty. So yeah, we, we know for a fact the world is a globe and there's no contesting that at all. Gotcha. Thanks so much for that, Tom. We will now get into open discussion mode. As I can tell, Billy's licking his chops. He's excited <laughs> to address some of those Big points. Time. Thanks so much. So the Big floor time. is all yours. Big time. I, I wish I counted the amount of times you said we, Tom. You kept saying we've been to space. <laughs> Excuse me. We've done this. We've done that. Who's we? What do you mean we? And then you went, and then you went to China and Russia. These guys, yeah, they all hate each other. So why do they trust each other and hate each other at the same time? Why does why do the Americans trust Russia to go to take them to the International Space Station after after NASA shut down their their space shuttle missions and now they pay them eighty million dollars per passenger per per um each way, right? So you are trusting your your biggest ad, your biggest like, adversary to take you to space and now you're sharing information with them and come on we're going back to the, we're going back to the 60s do you know the 60s were the most untrusted era in time your president at the time nixon is the most was the most untrusted president of ever of all time i should say ever so, right so, and now we we can't so, trust it and now we're going back to and that's so, why i'm doing test the curve day i know yep. tom wait, i'll let you speak so don't do don't do that because i've no, seen no, you, do that you said nixon was the most untrusted president no no second most untrusted president. <laughs> all right yeah you know let's do a poll on that you know there's there are many um <sighs> gee uh, have there been any trusted ones is what we should really be asking you know that's the question you know and that's why i'm doing test the curve that, like yeah are we going to really go back and trust the Russians in the 1960s? You weren't even born, man. Neither was I, actually. I was born in 1970. So anything before the first moon mission, I didn't see that. You, do you really think they went to the moon, as that song goes? Do you, think, do you really think they went to the moon? America, yes. The, uh, America, yes. What about China a few years ago? Yes, probably. Did you I Probably. Have you seen that footage? No, I haven't researched at all. And you've got to research that, mate. Things. And that's why I've done five years of research on this. And I was like you. I was very defensive against uh, um, against this. I didn't want it to be this. I don't want it to be this, man. And, you know, you ask why. Why wouldn't they come out and tell us? That's the biggest question. That's that's philosophy. That's, psych that's a big psych. You know, that's the biggest question of all. You know, let's not do that one. Let's let's take it step by step. So we're talking about China. We're talking about Russia and, and America and that they proved that this is, but it went before that. You've got to go back about two and a half thousand years ago when Aristotle was around and even, you know, other guy, Greek guys at the time who were postulating because they, they you know, they wanted it to be a ball, a lot of them, they. If you look at the, do you know about the Kabbalah and the way atom, you know, they, they, they devised atoms two and a half thousand years ago. And you talked about Newtonian mechanics, but we know that that's all wrong. We know that's wrong now. Now they're going to quantum theories and quanta is taken right over. And, you know, we're, we're working out if they're not mechanics, these orbits are not mechanics, you know, go and watch some videos into this holographic theory and, I reckon you'd you'd resonate quite well with them because it goes it could work well with you know there being um, evolution or a non-creator and this could be a holographic universe which is what a lot of scientists are talking about now. So if it's a holograph, how's it a ball? It's and more to the point. Where's the curve? Where's the curve, man? Have you gone? Where do you live, Tom? Do you how far from the ocean do you live? Uh, Minnesota, about five. You're in the middle miles, of thirteen hundred miles. Yeah, you're in the middle of the country. I live 700 meters from the beach, which is something like a thousand feet. And I go there every day, and I measure, and I look, and I observe every day, every day. And there's no curve. So Melbourne, Australia. If you look up Melbourne and the Port Phillip Bay in Melbourne, it's one of the inla largest inland bays in the world. Like right, 2,000 2, feet. Right, 2,100 feet, about 700 meters. 
Yeah, oh, sorry, 700 meters. Yeah, I should have said it. Times three, 20 on 2,100 feet. Uh, it's a 10 minute walk up the road. That's all it is. Two, two minute drive. So, sorry, I, I said 700 meters. You're right, 2,100 feet. All right, so yeah, I'm not really following much of what you said. Like, Newtonian mechanics was just less accurate than general and special relativity, and quantum less mechanics. Accurate. Relatively blew it away, man. Let's not go there. Let's not do that because that's not what the debate is about. You no, know, no, that's let's the point. Let's talk about, I'm not, I'm not about curvature and whether you following have seen the curvature of the Earth. Or whether that's you've that's right. That's right. But I'm not curvature. following how anything you said has anything to do with. I brought up said. Newtonian mechanics because you brought up Newton earlier, right. and you know right. Newton used. And do you know how Newton devised the R value in his formula? Do you know where he got that from? Um, math. He didn't, yeah, you know, and you don't get it from, he assumed it from Eratosthenes. Likewise did Cavendish. These guys didn't go and test the curvature of the earth and, and prove what their, pre, what their predecessors had done and their experiments that they've done. That's wrong. That's not how you science. Yes, sure you can't go and you can't go and reproduce every experiment. But when you know that your predecessors didn't have the equipment, nor did they have a telescope, because the telescope wasn't invented to like 14 92 by Hans Lippershe. So how the heck did they trust their, trust these Greeks anyway? Like, really? They trusted Greeks with their math two and a half thousand years ago and their observation with sticks um, and shadows, which apparently is going to be reproduced in a couple of weeks. No, we made testable predictions. So what we do is we create a hypothesis. Then we make a prediction. We say, if this hypothesis is correct, here's the prediction. Here, let's, here's what the results are going to be. And if we get it right, then we say, oh, their math was right because it successfully made a prediction. If we got the prediction wrong, then we'd be like, oh, they were wrong, so we need to make new math. But because they consistently got it right, every prediction we made was right, 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 right. Then Newton was like, oh, yeah, these guys' math, it's right because we can we keep making these predictions that keep, are, keep being correct over and over and over again. So that's why... Newton used those maths because they work. That's how science works, is that you make predictions, and if those predictions are correct, then whatever the uh, starting hypothesis was, that's a good reason to accept it. So that's that's why... That's cool. I like what you said. I, li I, I like that, Tom, and sorry to interrupt. I noticed someone said, Billy keeps interrupting. And man, please feel free. If you've got a word to say halfway through my sentence, just say that word. Don't go and take over the whole... But, you know, sometimes we need to interject and that's what dialogue is about it actually means the the in greek two words two people conversing which with one one another and i don't want to sit here in you know, a monologue type environment so if you want to say something get it in there but when you said if you know he said if he said if the math was correct if if and that's a big thing what if it's not and what if we've been using all these false assumptions all the way and that's why we're here that's why we're here going, hey, we thought we live on a ball. And what if they, along the way, you know, the question is why and why wouldn't they tell us? But we'll get there, don't worry, we'll, all in good time. But if what the math, if it's wrong? What if, if it's wrong? If the math was wrong, then we wouldn't be able to make predictions. That's, that's how we know it's not wrong. Sorry to interrupt. There's lots of them. So Newton was explaining all kinds of things about the rotation of the planets. He created an entire model of calculus based on explaining how the orbits of the planets around the sun and all of his predictions were correct related to that model. Um, he didn't even so, know the distance of the sun. On though, just Tom. to be sure that we for sure get the, to hear the rest from Tom. Yeah. Well, that's right. Sorry. He didn't, there's lots of things he didn't know, which makes the fact that he got them right so much more amazing. The fact that he knew so little and he could get so much right with that and so little is really good evidence that everything he was using is correct. That's why it was accepted. So he didn't actually need to know everything that would actually make it less impressive. The fact that he only knew a little bit and just had the math to base his predictions on and got them right every single time is really good evidence that everything he was using was correct, not incorrect. However, Einstein's theory of relativity totally debunks his theory of, of gravity. So no. which, which gravity we're going to... Yeah, it, do, it does actually. Man, no. you, can go, you can use Newtonian I, I, gravity for a, a few things, but you can't... It doesn't, re it doesn't answer, it's not the be all. And that's why Einstein came around and had to come up with his theory. No, this is, this is, I'm sorry to interrupt, but this is why I said Newtonian mechanics isn't wrong. It's just less accurate. So it's like if you can gauge the distance of like how far away that baseball is to within one meter or something, 
that's not wrong. It's only just right within uh, error range of one meter. Whereas Newtonian mechanics, that's what Newtonian mechanics was, whereas general relativity could gauge it in between like with one inch. So it's just more accurate. It isn't wrong. Newtonian no. predictions were not wrong. They were just less accurate than general relativity's predictions, which are also right. So general relativity didn't overthrow Newtonian mechanics. It's just more accurate in certain cases. We still use Newtonian mechanics for everything in every world, everyday life. It's not like it stopped being right. It's still right. We just we can't use it when we're trying to get down to the point zero 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 one degree of accuracy, which is what we need general general and special relativity for. But they're both right still. Do you, do you know how far Newton thought the distance of the sun was? Nope. Does it matter? Nope. Why? Because, because you can reverse is... engineer the math, can't you? What? You can, uh, you, and that's what he said. He said the same. He said, I care not whether the distance of the sun is three, 13 or 26 million miles away or something like that. It, ma it matters not. The math still works out the same. But it's actually 96 million. Well, that's a perihelion and a phillion 99 or something. So the math still works, but whatever. Yeah, well, it's, you know, that's... <laughs> that's something that you actually can't prove yourself. So that's why what? test the curve what? day is important. Test the curve day means that you can go out and do this. And let's revert because there are now over 200 million flat earthers around the world, 11 or 12 million in Brazil alone. That's concerning, don't you reckon? Uh, not particularly. I mean, I think there are billions of people who believe very silly things. I mean, there are billions of Christians. So I'm not particularly concerned that there are lots of people who believe silly things. But I'm not, again, following your point. The reason that the distance of the sun doesn't matter is because you can do the math regardless of the distance of the sun. It doesn't make a difference. It, 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 it doesn't, it's not that the equations are the same and the results are the same regardless of the distance of the sun. It's the fact that you can do the math regardless of the distance of the sun. So it, you, you get different answers depending on how far away the sun is. So he didn't, have, he didn't have the facts. And at age 23, he died without the facts, right? He died because he was an alchemist. I think he used to drink mercury. Pretty smart guy, huh? He thought he could make gold. Again, he drank totally mercury, not following... died at 23. And, and then he used... And then going back, I read a scene he didn't even know the distance of the sun when he did the stick and shadow experiment. And if we go back to that one, that one's a beauty because, you know, you get some people, so, um, the stick and shadow experiment, it wasn't even done with sticks and shadows. Well, some Carl Sagan said it was done with obelisks. Some other guy said it was a combination of obelisks and sticks and wells and you know, which one is it? Is that, is that a good experiment? If I said I drove a thousand miles and I did it in two hours, well, how'd you do that? Oh, yeah. One day I said I used a Ferrari. Next day I said I used a Porsche. And next day I used a friggin', you know, it, it was McLaren. It, which one is it? It was done multiple times. Combination with, of it, it a was, few. No, no, no. It was done multiple times over a long period for many different people with obelisks. Yes. With, with wells. Yes. With sticks. Yes. That's not the story, Tom. It's one yes, man. It no, that's Erastini's. No. Erastini's. Yes, Erastini's was, was done in one particular way. Um, you'd have to Google it to find out which one it was. But it wasn't, it's not like a vast array of possibilities. You did it in one way. No, that's not the story. I thought, yes, thought it was that too. I thought that was the way too. I thought that was the case too. You should do, how much research have you done on this topic in all honesty? Both sides, um, not one side, both sides. Both sides? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Like, Looked I've done up, research right into side. cosmology Watch. and astrophysics and um, physics and theoretical physics and all kinds of things related to how physics works, which, I mean, that's just the globe earther side. So I know the world is a globe for a fact. There's only, it's only, it's the only option. Like, you can't do physics without all of the math. You can't do physics. Yes, you can, man. You can't. Well, even, even the Eratosthenes experiment, you can do that based on a localized sum or a distant sun. Neil deGrasse Tyson okay. said that. He actually said that with his own words. Right, right. He, I, I grant that. What about the, you can't do physics, like astrophysics and cosmology right. and the actual modern physics. You can't do that with flat Earth models so, at all. You can do none of that. You're it. right. You can't tell with, without astrophysics because I just saw there was an article yesterday that said um, they found 8.8 .8 hab, um, habitable um, planets in the in the Milky Way. 8.8 .8 billion that's one, that's one for each person is Earth. 
These astrophysicists are assuming there's 8.8 billion planets out there that we can live on. Is that true? That's was an an estimate. It's astrophysics, we, isn't we've, it? We've only found about five to 6,000 that we can there verify. There was an article just yesterday, 8.8 yeah. 8 billion planets, I reckon, because every an, day... That's an yeah. estimate based off of the five, 6,000 we've actually found that are within the habitable zone. And then we estimate based off of the ones we have found, if we Wait. expand Wait. that... <laughs> It's a very select Humans. group. Of no, no, no. It's human beings. The entire collection of human beings we have found like five to six thousand habitable planets in the habitable zone of other stars that could support life. And based off of that in the level, the area of search that we can access, if we expand that to the level of the galaxy, we get this number. That's We haven't actually found that many. It's just math, isn't it? You just expand things, don't you? Just go, based on yes. this, it could be that. And these guys, you know, really, do you really believe all of that? Come on, I used to as yes, well one day. That's, but, that's, but you believe it all. You believe we haven't been there. We haven't been there. We haven't yes. been back to the moon. We can't even get past the Van Allen radiation belts. But you reckon they could work all this out and they've done all this. It's fine. Let's go. Let's get our heads out of the clouds. Let's get back onto Earth, right? Let's test the Earth. What have you done to test the curve of the Earth? Um, should I be just, proven, should be done at school, everyone should be doing, everyone should know how to test the curve, should be given, should be given. If we know how many stars there are in the sky, how many planets we could live on right now in the sky, let's test this earth. I, Why again, are people no, there's no, no need to. The, the Why? way, we, the need way to. we test hypotheses, we say, if our hypothesis is true, we make predictions, and if those predictions are correct, that confirms the hypothesis. And what if they're not correct then, Tom? Th then, we, then the hypothesis is wrong. So if we get it. Yes, if, exactly, because we could see further than we could. Have you seen what the long. The, no, the so, so that's false. So that's immediately false. Right? Like anything, anything you explain on Earth is already fully explained by the globe model. That's done. You can go bother, How does the, it explain? Go bother the physicists. How does it explain? That. So we know there's an easier way to know that the globe Earth is right, which is because all of the math and physics created by globe Earth math works. And there is no alternative. Okay. Oh. So everything explained in physics is explained by globe Earth math, and it works, and it makes predictions which are correct every single time, and there is no alternative. It's, it's just that simple. Like If you create an alternative that can do it, go for it, but you have it. Just saying that, oh, well, we can explain all the stuff we see in a different way does nothing to help your hypothesis. Like All of that is explained on the globe Earth model completely without any failure. No one has any problem with that. So saying that, oh, well, we can see farther because of, well, we shouldn't be able to see that far. But we can because the the refraction of light or whatever, like we have no problem with this. There's nothing we see on Earth that is any problem for the globe model at all. No observation on Earth causes any problem for the globe model at all. It's all fully explained by the globe model. So none of the challenges you bring are relevant to the globe model at all. It's like we we already knew all this. Like why why are you pointing to us, telling us all this stuff we already knew and we already explained like a hundred years ago? We, again, we explained it hundreds of years human, ago. Yes. We, human, we, we human, we human. Well, look, yeah. See, I'm not doing a we from hundreds of years ago. I'm doing a now. I go every day, every second day at the beach with my P900 camera. I go with this little baby. And we test stuff, man. You know how far this could see? 83 times zoom. 83 times, okay. mate. Go and get one. Go and get one. Go and do some and then you're going to say refraction of light, which you're telling me when I see things, they're not really there. They're behind the curve. When I see a man at the end of the street, he's not really there. Even though I know that ground is perfectly level, he's not really standing at the end of the street when I zoom in with that camera. No, he's behind the curve of the earth. Do you know how ridiculous that is? This camera uh, can zoom 60, 100 kilometers. We can see what, do you know what the world record long distance photo is? No. No. 440 kilometers, 273 miles. Google it. Why haven't you? Why don't you know this? Why would I need to know this? Why because shouldn't all you? That, because all it's all groundbreaking is... stuff. It just happened a no. couple of years ago. None, this of, that, none you... of that is groundbreaking. Like, none of that is... It's groundbreaking, man. It's groundbreaking. No. It is groundbreaking. That's why I won the world record. 
right? They don't give world records to non-groundbreaking yes. stuff, do they? Yes, they do. There, there's, a world like record, there, there's a world record for most hot dogs eaten. There's a world record for That's most... That's groundbreaking, man. So no one else well, has done it. <laughs> you do so, it. So none of that is groundbreaking at all. Like, you can get photos from very far away. If you get on top of a mountain and just take a photo from a really long <laughs> distance, you'll be able to see very far. But none of that what is if, anyway groundbreaking. So all of that is perfectly if, explained by the globe model. Like, none of that does anything to challenge the globe model. It's but good I, I, you, what you said about the guy standing on the end of the street not really being there, I mean, it depends on how far away he is and the speed of light. So when we look up at the stars, what we're, we're seeing is where they were oh, billions of years ago. And so they're not there anymore. Many of the stars we see in the night sky have already died. And, oh, they and died. Up. I know. So, I know. So, that's what they say. I know that story, man. It's a cool story. And it's been uh, proven, Lawrence, yeah, it's Lawrence proven. Krauss... Lawrence Krauss said, you know, Jesus didn't die for you. These stars died for you. And the stars in your left hand are different from the stars in your right hand. Have you ever seen any of the stuff? Like, you've got to do both what? sides. That's what I'm, that's why I'm here, you know. Like, I'm not here to debate you. I'm not even going to convince you. I've seen some of your videos. You have debate. You sit there debating with atheists on whether the word atheist is the right, is right or wrong. Like, you're getting two atheists arguing each other over a word that again, I'm not actually sure, means I'm not sure non what, how this is God. relevant. I know. So again, like we can prove the how are the stars, stars and the sky relevant? How is the sky to test the curve? So let's t testable is, predictions. Is, is, it's, it's all about testable predictions. Like when you say when we have to compare the evidence of both sides, there is only one kind of evidence, and that's testable predictions. It doesn't matter if you can post hoc explain other stuff we already know. The only kind of evidence that exists for anything is testable predictions. So you have to say, if my theory is correct, I can make a prediction about something we don't know yet, do a test to confirm that, and say, oh, I was right about this. Flat Earthers can't do That's that. You've done true. that for nothing, ever. That's Flat true. Earthers and I agree with what you're saying. It's about testing stuff. So what test did Newton do? Um, like calculating the rates of the planets of rotation. That's what, like with this, with a pen? Did he calculate with this? Yeah, I'll calculate. Yes, I'll calculate. Yes. And, then, and, then he, and then he looked at him and he's like, yes, okay, so I calculated. And he looked there. at him with what? With what? How? Up to the age of 23. Mm -hmm. He didn't even live long enough, man. 23 year olds. What did you do by 23? You can see, what did you do you by can 23? see the planets with your naked eye. You don't need a telescope. And you can predict everything with your naked eye. The planets with your naked no, no, eye? No, no, no. You, you use the math to do the prediction and then you can uh, confirm it with the naked eye. So I mean, I'm not sure what difficulty you're having with that one. But again, the flat earth... It's like, the BS behind it. it. And the difficulty I have is the BS that you, you are relying on a guy, on ancient people for now, for, for your... They would have told you that you can't speak through a microphone 500 years ago. Okay. Our okay. predictions suggest that based on our current technology, because Newton didn't even... Newton didn't even consider electromagnetism or any other aspect right. or static yeah or yeah. anything yeah. why is this whatsoever? relevant why is this relevant why? I mean, we can, we can confirm all of the equations it, today it matters with, now that we live that we know we live in an electromagnetic an electromagnetic yeah, but that, universe again again so it matters quite a lot so, so go back go back to the argument the argument was is that evidence is testable predictions newton made testable predictions he confirmed them, but if you don't want to believe that, that's fine. We can confirm them today and say, yep, he was right. Thousand nothing. miles, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Like all nothing. of that is perfectly explained under the globe model by the way how we know physics works. So there's, there's none of that in any way conflicts with the globe model. You just don't understand physics. It's a spinning ball then, and it'll always be a nothing. There's, there's nothing no, no, that that's, anyone that's, can show you. There's, you wait, wait, there's nothing anyone that could show you to change your mind. Is there is. Saying. There is absolutely. What is it? The, what is it? Just Ooh, find hold on me one sec, guys. One sec. I'm Go so, to Antarctica. One sec, guys. We so sorry. We we lost the connection. It just all of a sudden dropped. Oh. Damn. Um. Yeah, I have no so idea. So people can't hear us right now. No, they they can't right now. I'm Mobile trying to hospital. figure out. I'm trying to because figure out. Because I can out. see a few people going, oh, Billy's in Toronto. Oh, Billy's in Spurs. Oh, whatever. Okay, yeah, calm man. down a second. I'm trying to problem solve. So uh, we're... Is your mo mobile hotspot, is that still on? I've switched oh, it over. Uh, I switched it over to the computer internet, uh, the internet here in the building. So that's not what it is anymore. I don't know where, like, I just don't know where we are. So let me, uh, we might have to restart. So, well, I mean... Your first 34 minutes 
is fine. We just, okay, so it looks like we are started on another stream. Um, and I will go. <laughs> so, folks, thanks for sticking with us. We can see you there in the live chat. We see about 45, 54 now. So, sorry about that, folks. I have no idea what just happened. That was weird. So, we are so back and so glad that you are with us if you're watching in the live chat. Very embarrassing. Okay, so with that, gentlemen, uh, I can go back and look up those old super chats. So, folks, if you sent a super chat, don't worry. I will pull those up and we'll ask those during the Q&A. And with that, where were we before I interrupted you guys? Thanks so much for your patience. And uh, Billy was saying that there was nothing that could convince me that the world was flat, something like that. Yeah, I, no, I asked you, is there, so, so is there anything that could convince you that your model is, is flawed or needs? Yes, absolutely. Just novel, testable predictions. So, for example, um, if you believe in the firmament, like I don't know what your particular model of the flat Earth is. I've never seen it, man. Like, um, do you believe that the Antarctica, the South Pole goes all the way around the world? I have never seen, I've seen, you know, I've seen as much, like, what can we know about that? There needs to be, I, I believe if the, if there's water on, if the water, the water on its own needs to be contained. So there needs to be some type of containment. Otherwise the water's just going to go on forever. Have we seen massive ice walls? I've seen videos of it. I've seen them. Have you? No. No, well, you should do some research on it, man. Go and look at them. There Where are massive you... walls of ice. Admiral Richard Byrd climbed these walls of ice during Operation High Jump. They took thousands of men down there, thousands of um, sh 1,300 ships, like, um, 13 playing. I don't know. Look at the numbers. Like, I've actually written about them in my book. I should know them off the top of my head. But they've done I, these. I know they've about seen the they had to climb. They, they called it Operation High Jump because they had to get from their boats up to this ice wall and then go beyond. And he said there was more land, more ice, land to be found. Ice is floats on the top of the water. So there can't be an ice wall that contains the water because the water would go underneath it. So that's like the South It'd Pole to, is just a block of ice. The North It'd Pole is to. land, I think. Maybe it's the other way around, I don't remember. You're right, I agree that if there was ice, it would go all the way to the bottom, you know, the, we know ice floats, so there'd have to be a point where you would be able to go under this ice wall and keep going. Maybe that, you know, if you've got a submarine, you could keep going and pop up into the one of the other little ponds. We don't, we don't know. We don't go there. I don't, I can't do that, Tom. I don't know about the ice wall. I can't go there. I'm just a man in Melbourne. How am I, how am I going to go to the ice wall? Where Everybody have you been? can buy you a ticket even, to the south. You haven't even gone out and test the curve of the earth in your own land, let alone test the you know, find the, the ice wall or the firmament. Well, I mean, everything, uh, every test I do is going to be conformed to exactly what the geocentric model stuff is going to show. Just like every test you do conforms that, exactly gonna, to what the geocentric that's, model is That's what show. you should do. You should be going on testing that formula, actually. Testing what you, testing that formula. Testing where the water is level over vast distances. Well, we have. That's already we been have. demonstrated. So Where? everything, Where? every observation and every test on the face of the Earth has always 100% conformed to exactly what the geocentric math has expected it to do. That's So testing it now Geo, is like... Did you say the geocentric? That's what I'm claiming. That's my side, no, man. No, I'm geocentric. The, You're heliocentric. Heliocentric, yeah. So the, the yeah, globe so I'm helping you here. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I still got you the... You can clue. become a geocentric. You, you can become a geocentric so, eventually. Because Sorry, that's what I did as well. It's geocentric, and that's watch a watch a documentary called The Principle. Sorry to interrupt you again. Watch a documentary called The Principle, and you'll love it, man. Okay. Even the even the best Just scientists. To be sure. in the world. Yep. I hate to interrupt you, Billy. Just to be sure that Tom gets a response there. I appreciate your passion, though. We like that. And so, Tom, <laughs> just to be sure, you got a chance to respond there. I get fired up. Yeah. So so again. If you want to find evidence for the for the geocentric model or the flat Earth, you can't just look at stuff we've already seen and already explained and try to explain it in a different way. You have to do something new. So every observation we can make just by looking at the ocean or looking at um, taking photos from long distances or infrared testing or whatever, all of that's been done. We already know all of the answers you're going to get from that. You could just ask the scientists and ask them what you're going to get, and they're going to tell you, and they're going to be right 100% of the time. They already know all of this. So just saying that you can explain it using a different 
analysis and say that theirs is wrong for some reason, which it's not, doesn't do anything to help your case. I mean, we've already done all these tests everywhere in the world. We know they're right. Um, you need something new. Like if we could, you, you asked if there was anything that could convince me of the geocentric model or the flat earth model. If you buy a plane ticket to the South Pole, which anyone can do, like any human being can buy a plane ticket to there just like they can to anywhere else in the world. And you find this ice wall, that would be great evidence. Find me the edge of the world, essentially. That's great evidence. But no one's ever done that. Like, I've never seen a flat earther go to the South Pole. Anybody can do this. Like, anybody can just buy a ticket to the South Pole. It's pretty easy. And just rent a truck and just drive wherever you want. No one's going to stop you. But they don't. Like, no one ever goes. That would be the greatest so evidence for the flat earth. Just find the firmament. Just find a giant invisible wall going up into space that no one can get past. Poof, you, you've got this amazing evidence for the flat earth. But no one's done that. No flat earthers have ever gone to the South Pole because it's just another continent of ice, just like every other one. It's there's nothing special about it. it. Doesn't there's no blockade holding the water in. It just holds itself to the surface of the Earth because it's a globe, just like all the other planets that we see hold gas to their surface. So yes, there are definitely things that could convince me the world is flat. Go find the firmament. That would be great evidence. So so far, you want me to go to the ice wall and find the firmament. Let me explain the ice wall, which you said um, is all ice. Sorry, the Antarctica, which is a continent of all ice. It's not. Google it. There's land there. You'll see mountain peaks when they melt. There's actually mountains. There's land in Antarctica. It's not all ice like we were led to believe. Our model is, our model, the things you know, I got taught the same stuff, mate. I got taught the same stuff at school as you. I know what you're saying about this. It's both the, the, Antarctica is supposed to be at the bottom of the wall. Billy's back. Thanks so much, Billy. Uh, so I sorry. Billy. It was my fault, Billy. I'm so sorry That's about fine. that. That's Promise fine. that no won't. I blame no Tom, worry. but it won't happen again. Yeah, cool, cool. I think it, where I got cut off, uh, we're talking about Antarctica and, you know, um, and the firmament. And that's just like way beyond what anyone can prove. Can you prove the Val Allen radiation belts, Tom? I bet you, you can't. Can you prove what's at the core of this spinning ball? You can't. No yes. one's even. How? Testable predictions. You can make novel testable predictions. How? Like you can predict that if there is, if it's made of whatever composition you want, then you can make a prediction about what the uh, field that it creates is going to be like. And you can make a prediction that. If there's a different planet with a different composition, it'll make a different field, and that'll have a different effect on the kinds of radiation that it'll allow through. So we can we can definitely show those things. Yes. But we've only drilled eight miles down into the we earth. We don't need to. We don't need to actually see it. We don't need we don't to directly see it. My, uh, the weather here, the Weather Channel makes certain predictions all the time. They're always wrong, man. They're yes, wrong. That's why we don't trust them. If, if that's right, why, yeah, that's we why we don't them. trust. Them. And these are the same people that may have, you know scientists make no, other no. predictions. No, like, no the, the weather people, the me, me, meteorologists, no, are not the same as the. the earth. You can't go to the core of the earth, and I you don't can't need to. To the edge of the earth. Well, I don't need to either. I don't need to go to the edge of the earth, like you said, the edge of the earth. I don't think you've researched this topic enough for you to say edge of the earth. You're assuming that what is it? The earth is a flat earth is a disc flying through space that a cat's going to push things off the edge. Is that what you're assuming? I have no idea what your model is. That's why I, I wanted you to go first. I don't, I don't think that. I think that the Earth is an infinite plane. I think it can, I don't know what it is, actually. I don't know what it is. But what I do know is that we don't live on a spinning ball. And how would you prove that we do yourself? How would you go out and prove that we live on a spinning ball? Novel testable predictions. I'd use the math that they use and show that it works. They use, not they. Now, how would you start from day one to prove you live on a spinning ball? Let's say you woke up. This debate was not... It, it was never ever discussed where we live. And you said no one taught you anything and you had to figure out where you live. What test would you do? You'd wake up and go, Am I, it feels stationary. I'm not moving. Yeah, well, that would be a terrible it's methodology. If I did that, I would be an idiot. So anyone, anyone who does that is dumb. So Because we know there's better methodologies out there. So if we just woke up like in a tribe, in the uneducated tribe in the middle of Indonesia, yes, we should probably not do anything they're doing because that's not going to get us anywhere. 
what we should do is look at the modern technology of the past 2,000 years of how we've gone from that level of technology to skyscrapers and planes and telephones and cell phones and cameras and stuff and use that methodology because that methodology works. So, they're different. That's different. You know, when you're talking about physical materialistic things that you can prove, you know, like buildings, we know someone built that like building. The plane, like, you know? like the, the but, globe. But that's different to theoretical the science. That's different to theoretical science, isn't it? Well, nothing in yeah. physics isn't theoretical science unless it's theoretical physics. So, no, the globe isn't theoretical. It's proven. It's physics. It's theoretical. Nope. You went from, from the very start that one of the first things you said is photos from Earth from space. Photos of Earth from space. They're questionable. Right. You know that. Okay, no flat that's, earther that's, would be no, a flat earther no, if they were real is, photos. Physics isn't based off photos. That's just physics. You started the discussion. I've got it written down right. here. You said we about 23 times. Yeah. Then you said China, Russia, satellites. Satellites can't be all predictions we make for orbital mechanics yep. on satellites can't be done. Have you seen the balloon satellites? No, there's no balloon satellites. No. no. So, you know, I, I should write down the amount of no's that you said. Um, that you haven't researched, man. Yeah, because I don't That's need to. Good. Again, all I, the you only thing to. I need—the only thing I need—is testable predictions. So I can say, yeah, I know, Here's I know. That's all I needed. Me too, because I, I got to the point okay, when where after, are they? after after sifting through all the bullshit, excuse me, after sifting through all the bullshit of the site of the model that we were taught, and I'm Greek, right? I loved the heliocentric model. I could tell it inside out. And did you know when Newton made his predictions, he didn't realize that. The sun was also orbiting through the, the universe at 500,000 miles an hour, plus okay. all these other... Or, they, they didn't know that, man. They didn't know that. They thought it was a... They thought that the sun was in the centre. They called it heliocentric, and we went around the sun. But now okay. we know it's been... It's doing this, and all these Wait, other... Or, why Why? Why are you saying this? Like, why do you think this is relevant? Like, Because, yes? it, because you, you're going based on predictions that these guys were wrong, man. Newton would have... And they were not like, wrong. They, they were... Like, why do you think it's made them wrong? Like, they only made predictions about the solar system, and their predictions about the solar system were right. Their predictions were, about the solar system in relation to the galaxy, well, they didn't make any in that sense at all. They, they, all, made, they reverse engineered that off the... Off the um, Tom, um, Ptolemy system, what? didn't they? And if, you know, if you go reverse, back in time, and the the heliocentric model was reverse engineered. They just looked at what no. was that and they reversed the numbers. But you could do it. Fred um, Fred Hoyle said the same. You've got to do your research on the topic, Tom, with an open mind. What do you That's think all reverse I, engineered means? It means you could either say that we're spinning right now and that's what's creating the sun to appear to be moving over the sky or you could say that i am stationary and the sun is moving you could do the math on both models you could either say the sun the, the earth is spinning a thousand miles an hour or you could say the sun is moving across the sky a thousand miles an hour and you could do the math on both models you no. can so that Why was not? not that was not how the heliocentric model was made uh, funny enough no it was Heliocentric model was made based off of actual testable predictions that we could see in the universe that better explained testable reality. Testable predictions. Testable yes. is a very testing. What's that, you yes. know, testing? How do they test it? He didn't, con Newton didn't conduct it's, any it's tests. It's really, right? really Neither simple. Did. It's really, Neither really simple. Copernicus. No tests yes, whatsoever. They did. Yes, yes, they did. What they, tests? They did. Oh, you looked at the sky? That's an observation, not a test. Yes. No, a test is, is you look at the sky. Then you do the math and make a prediction about when you look at the sky cool. in the future, what are you going to see? And if that you, means then if you wait in the future and then you see that, that's a confirmed prediction. Confirmed. Done. Right. Dusted. On, on an assumed rate, you know, you, you've got to go back in time to how these guys came up with these numbers. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how you came up with them. How you came up with them is irrelevant. You could just roll a magic eight ball and say, you can't I'm going to make that, it. Yes, you can. I'm yes, sorry, can. This, man. This is, just, I can't. This, is just, this is basic how science works. You, if you, you can travel to New York, you can't just make a prediction when you're going to New York. You'll never get there. But you'll just die halfway, man. What? You've got to, you, you've got no to make idea. some... I have no idea what you're, what you're saying. So Good. how predictions work is that you make mm. up a methodology. Doesn't matter what it is. You could say magic pixie leprechauns told you in your sleep. That's perfectly fine. And if you use magic pixie leprechauns told me that <laughs> in year 2020, there's going to be an asteroid that comes by the earth and we confirm that, that's a confirmed prediction. That's evidence of magic pixie leprechauns. How you came to that methodology doesn't matter. Going into Q&A in just a few doesn't minutes. doesn't matter. That's a classic. All that matters is, is the testable prediction confirmed? That's evidence. That's how evidence works. Confirmed. And how would you, you know, to what level 
um, confirmed and that's it, done, <laughs> dust. Yeah. So even if people come and question it, it can't be questioned. It's confirmed. You confirmed right. it. I'm done. Right. Singled. So if it's, if it's confirmed, then what you need to do to, to overthrow that is you need to make a better prediction. You have to go we into are. the future. We are, man. Well, that's what we're doing. That's yep. what we're trying to advance. You've never made any. Topic. Sorry? The flat earthers have never made any. Like what? Where? Where are they? We're predicting that. Okay, we we predict the water is level over vast distances. Okay, we've proven that false. We predict that perspective plays a major importance to how we view things in our universe, in in our in in the sky, in um, our life. Wait, what? So perspective, perspective is how perspective, we view things. So a perspective ramp. So, so wait, wait. So what you just said is perspective which is how we view things so how we view things is really important to how we view things in the universe is that what you just said definitely how we view things looking down the street or even when we see a boat disappearing over the horizon i agree how we have, have you looked at the have you looked into the black swan Did, have you seen all that stuff the, the geometric horizon to the apparent horizon have you seen uh, the problem have you seen the problem that's occurring there is I no problem you, so so there problems, is no problem there is no problem so, so the Earth curvature math and the, and the geometric horizon that we've been told is, a, um, according to our height at sea level, is it works fine. You're saying, yes, everything in the geocentric model. And you've got to listen to some of the the globe earthers are actually saying it's wrong. The globe earthers are saying it's wrong, Tom. They're then calling they're, it an apparent horizon now. They're okay. saying there is no geometric horizon. It's apparent. Okay. And, and it can change depending on the conditions of the day. That means it's not. That means it's not um, geometric. That means it's not physical. That's a real no. problem. Like what? what if you're, you looking, at, about? Like, if you're so, looking at like, an object. And so, so this is pretty easy. Like when you have a, a gas and the gas is heated, then it expands and it'll cause um, less refraction. And if it's cooled, it'll compress and it'll cause more refraction, which is determined by the time of day because the time of day means that the sun is putting light on those gases, causing them to heat up or cool down. So the apparent horizon is caused by the time of day, by physics, all just physics we already know about of the way at which the molecules heat up or cool down. So so yes, the, the globe model is correct on that one. We've already explained did that. that. Did, Aristotle, did Aristotle know this when he made his predictions? No, but he didn't of, make any of predictions viewing about a boat, this. Of viewing a boat going over the horizon with his bare naked eye? No, he really? didn't. And he, he didn't. didn't. They didn't even know about refraction a lot, did they? Right. What and about Rodasthenes? Did Rodasthenes know about these varying conditions in the atmosphere? Did no, he know about didn't altitude? Need to. Sorry? He didn't need to. Like, none of that was he didn't a part need to, of his prediction. But now I need to. Now I need to when I'm viewing oh. things further. You're saying atmospheric conditions and the gases can create distortion on the things we're seeing. Right? I get what right. you're saying. I'm not, I'm not saying right. you need to know that. I'm We've... saying that the globe model has already explained all of that. We've like, got. We a, already know all of this. Like you trying to explain it in a different way doesn't do it. We've got a. Let's see. Trying to remember. No. I think that I uh, we started. I think with Billy. So let's wrap up with there. Tom has had the last word technically. So thanks so much, folks. It's a wild one. It's always hard to stop. It I don't is. know. It's like because there's always got to be somebody with the last word. So thanks for your patience on that. And we're going to jump into the questions, folks. Appreciate all of your questions and especially your patience with us tonight. If you're hanging with us, you are hanging with us. You're going to see this debate. You're the only persons who are seeing it live and who will see it like in the next like week because it's going to take me like a week to like edit this <laughs> one and put it back up in a single debate compacted with these three pieces. But thanks so much, Stephen Steen, for your super chat, you sicko. He says, Tom's a strange relationship with his dad must watch and he's right folks if you haven't seen on the bottom right of your screen tom jump and steve mccray his father will be debating in person live from los angeles on march 17th it's going to be a lot of fun thanks so much also kang 024 for your super chat who said for 300 bucks you can buy a weather balloon kit from here strat stratoflights.com and just see the shape of the earth for yourself well, I didn't say which which uh, oh. shape it was, so I guess we can keep going. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much, Stephen Steen, for your other super chat. He says, there simply exists some, quote, unknown natural, unquote, flat earth math that explains everything better than the, quote, globe of the gaps, quote, math 
from Tom Jump. Checkmate, Flat Earth. Tom, what are totally your thoughts? Totally possible. Like, we could all be in the Matrix and the world is actually flat, and then they're right. Like, damn, they got us. The world's actually flat, but we're just on the Matrix, and so it's all a lie when we look around. It's no, no. Gotcha. Thanks so much, by the way. Hannah Anderson and Philip and Cody Davis for your super chats, which just came in. We will uh, be coming up on those pretty quick. Thanks so much, Justin Ian, for your super chat. As he said, Billy, can you go outside? Actually, Justinian, that might be a Justine. Whoever it is, whatever you, you go by. Billy, can you go outside at night and see Polaris? No. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Kang024, thanks for your super chat. They said, there are hundreds of uncut videos of amateur weather balloon flights that go high enough to see the Earth's curve. Is that to me? Yes. Oh, cool. Because there are many other balloons that show it that it's flat. And when you, and you watch some of these um, high-altitude balloons, you'll, ne you'll notice that they use a fisheye lens, which as it's go as it takes off from the ground, it's already got curvature. It's got curvature from the ground, that ground like six feet high. Then when you get to 100,000 feet and you'll see the balloon starts leveling out, it'll go from a convex to a concave. Sorry, concave to convex. Um, because of the cap, then it levels out. You'll see flat. So that's what got me thinking. I, I had to do all this as well. You know, I, I implore everyone to go and watch video, hours and hours of videos. Don't just watch a five-minute video of some school kids launching a high-altitude balloon and you take that as gospel. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Pop and Bala, we'll get to your super chat soon. Just saw that fly in. And also thanks to Cody Davis and Robert Summers. We're going to get to those soon. But first... Kang, we got that one. Okay. Plain Truth. Tom Jump's brother. Flat Earth friend of Billy Zig. Billy, do you know Plain Truth? I do. Yeah, I've known, I, I do know Plain Truth. Yeah, definitely. Flat Earthers stick together. Is it? You guys seem pretty tight. The Flat Earth community, like, Flat Earthers got each other's back. Is that fair to say? We have, we have become tight. And even though we don't agree on, you know, if there's a ferment and, you know, every aspect, we don't even agree on a map. Like, no, we don't have a map. You guys can't agree on a map either because all the ball earth maps are wrong as well. But yes, we do have a tight community and I've met some fabulous people. And you betcha. from both camps, actually, not just flat earthers, I've met from both camps. I don't really, I don't, I don't care what you think anymore. I just like people to be humane. Yeah, anyway. You got it. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. And T, or, uh, the plain truth says T jump. Please provide a citation that a prediction of an unknown phenomenon is a requi is a requirement to validate a hypothesis. Not rhetoric. Provide a citation. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, the Methodology of Science. Gotcha. Thanks so much for that. Kang024, thanks for your super chat. Who mm -hmm. says, in Billy's five years of research, did he not look at the sunset or a sunrise? Billy, what are your thoughts? Are you convinced by that? Every day, uh, every day, of course, um, you know, a very easy, uh, easy ob uh, observation one can do. Um, of course, I've looked at the sunset in summer. Like, what, what sort of question is that anyway? Okay, when the sun rises, it's not even that warm. You'll notice when the sun gets to zenith, that's when the real heat kicks in. When it moves over and, and it sets again, the warmth is leaving. That proves the sun is local and not 93 million miles away. The same goes with visual. You can look at the sun when it's at sunrise. You can look at the sun at sunset, but try looking at the sun. I don't recommend it. You can't look at the sun at zenith when it's right above you because it'll blind you. It's closer to you. So as it's leaving you over the distance, it's causing perspective issue, isn't it? When you, If you look at your perspective ramp, you can Google that. Google, go to images, and look at your perspective ramp and exactly what appears when an aeroplane is coming from the horizon and overhead and disappearing again. It's doing this over you. And you can prove that. Look down a hallway and you, you get the same effect. If you stand in the, middle of a, in the middle of a long hallway, stand in the middle, look that way, you'll get your ramp that way, look that way. So what's got, mate, we've got to understand how our eyes work first before we know whether what's happening with a, a sun setting over the horizon. Thank you. Gotcha. Good question, by the way. It's a very common one. Thanks so much. And Stephen Steen, thanks for your super chat. Uh, let's see. He says, Billy might be more alpha than James. Get him. That's very nice. I uh, 
I'm a little bit threatened. Uh, Billy is quite alpha, but thanks, Plain Truth, for your super chat. Another one for Tom Jump, his arch nemesis. He says, Tom, provide one primary citation for your claims on sticks, wells, and other what else again? Citation, please. Well, what was the name of the guy who did the test? Eratosthenes. How do you spell that? E-R-A-T-O-S-T-H-E-N-E-S. Gotcha. Thanks so much. If Google needs a correction. Yeah, I mean, if you just uh, Google it and you can find all of the references... Yeah, I know. We've done that, though. That's not, you know... Like, well, you just wanted a reference, so here, that's a reference. The funny thing is that if you really do... You, mm. right, keep that screen up when we finish the chat. Do some research on it, Tom. I think you'll like the topic. It's very interesting. I, I, I knew about this experiment before Flat Earth. I didn't know what the guy's name was, but I knew about it. I knew that someone had measured the circumference of the Earth to 10% of its current value. That was known. You know, we've known that for a while, right? Gotcha. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. And next up, let's see. What was I? I was just going to read something else. Oh, yes. Actually, now I know what it was. Thanks so much. Saw your super chat come through, Philip A. And we're going to get to that pretty soon here. Thanks so much for your super chat from B-Ball for Life, who says, Neil deGrasse Tyson also says the Earth is not effing flat. Gotcha. Billy says that Neil deGrasse Tyson should get his book, The Elusive Curve. Get the book. (laughs) On Amazon. (laughs) Thank you. uh, Ranger Man 9404, thanks for your super chat. Who says, did he say Isaac Newton died at 23? According to Google, he was born in 1643 and died in 1727, which would make him 84 years old. Yeah, it was a Copernicus. Sorry, one of them. They gotcha. were young. Though. Thanks for, uh, appreciate your authenticity. Next up, Goku Sun, thanks for your super chat. Says, Billy, why is it always the ocean being used for disprovi- disproving the curve? Why not just use land? You could use land, actually, if you want. But what I find with o- that, ocean does a very, okay. We, uh, Tom brought up refraction of light before. That means that um, we have this distortion in the atmosphere. So what we need is a physical body, something physical we can mention, measure with. And I believe water is level over vast distances. And that's what we're finding, you know. You, it, the natural physics of water does that. Tom likes, um, likes physics. Look at um, hydrostatics of wa- and water, fluid dynamics, fluid mechanics. It suggests that water lays... Um, uh, level at rest or flat. And there we get ebb and flow in oceans and, and lakes. But that's why I like to go to um, the ocean because it's only 700 metres away, as I said, 2,000 feet. Um, and I've got, I'm have got i actually planning to go and do some long-distance observations over land. You get varying conditions because over water you've got salt evaporation, you've got all this moisture, um, mist and um, uh, conditions that are affecting... So, yeah, I do want to get out and do some land. And I've done that. I've driven across Australia. I've seen long distances. <laughs> More gotcha. than you know. More than you know. You bet. Thanks so much. And also, thanks, Steve1758. We are going to get to your super chat soon. Appreciate you sending that in. And Kang024, reading down the list, says, Billy, hope you enjoy that P900. You have Isaac Newton to thank. I love it. And I, I want to apologize. Maybe that I, I did misquote Isaac Newton dying at that age. Um, you know, that could have been misinformation. I, when I'm wrong, I'll, I'll say I'm wrong. So sorry. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. B-Ball for life. Thanks for your super chat. Who says flat earther. We see too far. Or they, they're saying like the flat earther says we see too far. The globe earther says, why can't you see Polaris from Australia? The flat earther says it's too far for us to see. It's very. I can. Can I explain that? Gotcha. I'll explain it how it's within a. You know how I explained it in my book. So imagine you're, there's a, you've got the largest warehouse on earth. You know, it's talking about a, a Walmart or a Kmart, which is you know ten times the size you could imagine. You're standing in the center of this warehouse and you look up, and there's a light above you, and you can call that light Polaris. 
Now, if you went to the very furthest point of that building and looked up, you're not going to see Polaris, obviously. Even if you looked the, over yonder, um, your angular resolution and perspective is going to limit your ability to see it. Now, if we assume the sun is 93 million miles away, yeah, you could say, well, the sun is far. Surely we could see it. But if we're doing that, the sun is going to be there, there. And, well, where is it? So, and there are instances with the sun where Polaris has seen being seen below the equator, which doesn't make sense on a on a um, spinning ball. Gotcha. That's my that's my explanation. That's the only way I can get my head around why I can't see Polaris, you and why you guys can't see our stars as well. Yeah, thank you very much. And sorry, I was distracted trying to keep keep myself on track. Thanks up. Uh, thanks so much. Let's see, we got that one. Okay, great. Captain Crunch, thanks for your super chat. He is the twin perverted brother of Steven Steen. He says, I'll leave Steven Steen for you. Thank you. Maybe that was for Tom. It must have been for Tom. Thanks for your super chat. Perspective Detective, who says, to both, south of the equator, stars appear to revolve around the celestial south pole. Same as northern stars around Polaris. How is this possible on a flat Earth? Does he mean the the way they rotate? Yeah, the stars in the North Pole rotate clockwise and the stars in the South Pole rotate sure, clockwise. Sure, okay. If you, get, if you get a wheel, okay, get a wheel, a, a bicycle wheel, lay it down flat, spin it. Pretend that you're on this side of the wheel. Create an equator around uh, on that wheel. Stand on one side, you view it that way. Stand on that side. You, it's going to change. Your perspective is everything. I, I love that word. It's a new word because I, it, it, I had to realise this world where I live on relies on, on a lot of what my eyes are seeing as well, yeah? You've got to trust. We're told not to trust our senses. We're told not to trust the, the you know, the motion that, you know, you wouldn't feel the earth spinning. You know, you wouldn't. Yeah, anyway, sorry. I hope I answered that. No problem. I, I totally did not follow that at all. Um, so if we look up in the North Pole, they rotate clockwise. And we look down in the South Pole, they rotate counterclockwise. Now, if we're on a flat Earth, that would mean like half the flat Earth is rotating one way and half of it's rotating the other way. Like they're on little mini disks on the bigger disk or something. And when so, you're talking about how the stars rotate and you're using a camera to to capture that as well, you you know, you're talking... Um, about various optics are going to, you know, uh, optical illusions are going to occur as well. I don't know. I don't know how that works, man. I don't know. What about when you're on an equator? When you're on the equator on a ball and you're here, you should be seeing stars do that, yeah? yeah. You should be seeing them spin on both, do um, you? you? You know, and, on a, and, and if you consider that there's a ferment in the sky, which there's a CIA document that actually... 1956 or something like that that talks about flat earth and ferment in the one document and on the one page they actually i'll send you the link if you want, i can link it right here um they they consider that there's a ferment back then but i don't know why we can't but gotcha i don't know i don't have all the answers actually yeah yes we do actually happen. on the equator we see stars rotating on both sides we yeah and that can happen if you get a, if you get a dome if, if you get a dome and and there's actually good videos out there, Tom. There's videos out there that show, and to anyone else, I'm, you, you probably won't be able to find them, um, but they actually show demonstration where the stars can work like that on a flat model too. So do the stars prove that what we're standing on here, what the ground that we're on? No. Do you know what's happening up gotta there? You've got to go pretty quick to the next question. Yeah, let's do it. Let's wrap it up. Yeah, anyway. Next up. Thanks. I don't know. I don't know. There's another one from me. I don't know. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Kango, is it? Oh, it must be Kang024. Thanks for your super chat. Said question for Billy is the vast amount of satellite survey data that Google Maps constructed with fake. With fake. Is that the oh, last one? Oh, okay. I see what they're saying. They're saying, is the vast amount of satellite survey data that Google Maps is constructed with fake data? Or, yeah, you get it? Um no, I think it's got some relevance to it. Of course, we're using it at a street level to get around, so it can't be that fake. Um, what are they using? Are they using a distant satellite, which is 20,000 20, miles in the sky, to get this data? No, I don't believe so. I think it's all localised, fairly, um, you know, their um, satellite balloon 
that we have seen, you can actually prove that and Google tells you they're running projects, Google loons, which is all um, balloon based technology. And there's actually videos that show you how they quick release there. They can launch these every 15 minutes in the sky. 15 minutes, man, all automated, fully automated. You're launching balloons in the sky. You can watch the videos yourself. So um, when you get, when you zoom out of Google, zoom out on Google Maps and it starts showing the ball, that's BS. It's a cartoon. Anyway. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Appreciate your super chat from Goku Sun, who said, Billy, have you done the math? On which, what aspect? I'm not sure. Mm, the math of... Billy's what? done all of it, okay? <laughs> Sorry, James, what was that? I said, Billy's done all of it, okay? I don't... I no. have, I'm teasing. No. I have no idea. No. Okay. Billy says he hasn't done all of it, but he's... No, maybe... no way. I'm too young to have done it all, man. But that's no true. Way. That's a good uh, point. You need, live, you need to live many lifetimes to work out this, but, you know. And if you don't, you'd... You're getting hand-me-down information like what Newton's, Copernicus, Kepler, it just went on. It's hand-me-down. They didn't go and do the experiment. Anyway. You got it. Thanks so much for that. Appreciate it. Next up, Michael W. Robel. Thanks for your super chat who says, first, says uh, Newton died at 84. Um, ask Billy mm, if he has I ever... They said, ask Billy if he's ever been to the sea and watched city skylines and tall mountains disappear and reappear over the horizon disappear and reappear yes i've even seen small sailboats if you go visit my channel um billy zig on youtube you'll see just two weeks ago there was a sailboat well over the horizon got the p900 out um and brought that sailboat right back in it was a, it was a small sailboat as well it wasn't like a you know sydney d hobart bloody big super yacht or anything um, and yeah, you could uh, the other day, um, perfect conditions. I could see the Yuyan Mountains in its entirety, and and even beyond. There were mountains behind that, which I'm trying to work out which ones they were. But mate, I'm seeing we're seeing. I wouldn't be doing this if it was, you know, it's not a popular, um, it's not a popularity concept uh, thing to be on to be a flat earther. We don't do this for popularity. I'm telling you that we do this because we're. We've found something and we're trying to share this information. And we're actually asking you guys to go and do your own research as you keep hearing. Don't trust me. Don't worry about me. Don't trust Copernicus and these ancient dudes. Go and do your own research. And that's what Tom, I hope, is going to do when he, he's heard all these new names and he's got this new information. He's going to get out, out and do some research when he feels a bit better. Nope. I'm just going to go with what math works. They, they, their math works. Cool. You'll never change your mind then. Well, no. You just have to if the government actually math. said, if the government, you know, 10, 15 years time, when they realise, okay, society can accept this, and now look, we better, we better tell them because the whole world knows the Earth is flat. There are like a billion people that know it. the tipping point has happened. What are you going to do? Sit there and go, no, no. The, even though the government has now told you, hey, look, we had to do this. We thought society wasn't ready for a cultural, you know, ma massive cultural change. They're going to. You know, right. Yeah, I don't care what the government says. What the government says is irrelevant. All I care about is the testable predictions, and the testable predictions only work for the globe model, so that's the only one I'm going to believe. Where do they, and where do they come from? These predictions come from the government, don't they? No. They come no? from the scientists. Who, who, oh, who, right. funds, who funds the scientists? Anyway, Perfect. we won't go there. We'll do this another time. Yeah, Think Tom. about who funds this. Okay, yeah. thanks so much. Pap and Bala, thanks for your super chat. They say, why can I see the moon in the middle of the day, Billy? <laughs> Good question. Why can you see the moon in the middle of the day on the globe Earth model? And if you look at it, and you what you study that for the next twelve months, and that's what I did. I did like I did many months, seven months of like observation. And I, before I even wanted to say flat Earth to my family, I went and what and I started observing things. That if you if you're at school and you drew the sun and the moon and the, and the sky at the same time, right next to each other, the teacher would say that's incorrect because they can't do that, but they actually do. And if you look at the angular position of whether uh, of, of the, um, the highlight of the moon when it's occurring, it doesn't make sense, mate. It gotcha. doesn't make sense. So anyway. Thanks so much. And let's see. <laughs> do you mind if I just go on just a little bit more? And we're seeing there, is, there are many anomalies because right now you're getting people from around the world taking snapshot photos at the same time simultaneously around the world and showing the moon in the sky, 
that doesn't work on the globe Earth model. So people from Melbourne, Arizona, taking photos of the moon at the same time, which, mate, this is groundbreaking stuff. No one's done this before. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. And Hannah Anderson, they're never going to let this go. Poor Billy. <laughs> Hannah said, why did Billy lie when he, when he said Newton died? He was 80, 80, not 23. Oh, Hannah. I think she's trolling you. I don't know. Hannah I know. Lied. Whatever. Yeah. You know, they'll play, you know. I love that you own it. That People like that, Billy. I we, really, we, you know, that, really that's why if I'm wrong, man, when I'm wrong, I'll tell you I'm wrong. That's why I, it's, it's, sorry, I apologize, didn't I, straight away. So. We love having you here, Billy. We really do. Uh, we God, honestly, I love being here, James. That's it. I appreciate that. And Philip, thanks for your super chat, who said, Billy, do you think that other planets in the moon are flat? I think if they're round there's no relevance to whether we're round, you know, if the, if the light in the sky on my ceiling is round, doesn't mean the floor is round. So they could be round. I look at the moon and I, I even last night with a beautiful full moon in Melbourne, I was up till about five in the morning, you know, I did a red eye. Um, then I got a few hours sleep for this and yeah, it looks spherical, but so do objects in water. You can put a flat object in water and it distorts and other planets. I don't know what they are, man. Gotcha. I don't know what they are. I've got a telescope, got a P900 out. I look at them and they're amazing. That's all I know. <laughs> they're amazing. Gotcha. Thank you twinkle, very Twinkle, much. little star, how I wonder what you are. That's what I'm going to say. Appreciate that. And Andrew Handelsman, as well as Steve1758 and Sarah Pease herself, also named, known as Beta Sarah. Thanks for your super chats. We'll be getting to those in just a second. But first, Philip, thanks for yours. Well, we just asked that, actually. Embarrassing. Cody Davis, thanks for your super chat. He asked, Zig, do you understand the longest picture is only 0.01% of Earth's circumference? If I stole 0.01% from your bank account, you also wouldn't notice. Is that really a question? Is, it, is that how we measure things with 0.01s now? Do we really? Is that really a question? Gotcha. Yeah. Do you realise that that distance is well be, well behind the the um, given Earth curvature math? And it's, there's about nine kilometres of missing curvature, man. So you go do that research, pump it through several calculators. At best, you're going to get about three to four um, kilometres um, of missing bulge and that's if you use the metabunk calculator if you use the generic calculator you get about nine kilometers and then you've got to factor in refraction on whether you know and whether the guinness world record actually hands out um world records for optical illusions because that's what you would be saying but they've actually handed out a world record for a long distance photo point to point and if you look at it it actually goes over um a, a part of you know some bay in europe where there's level water across for at least 100 kilometers so you've got land you know they're on the they're on an elevated point of course um and they're viewing an elevated point but even so you factor all the elevation points in, and you do the math don't trust me do the math because i got newton wrong so don't listen to me <laughs> Good, thanks for that <laughs> And also, thanks so much for that super chats or those super chats that came in from Orlor and Ranger Man. We will be getting to those shortly. Appreciate that. And let's see. Cody Davis, though, thanks for your super chat. Uh, let's see. Do we, no, we asked that one. Sorry about that. Robert Summers, thanks for your super chat. Asked, how would the Flat Earth model predict tides? Predict tides? Okay. Um, the current tidal model doesn't work anyway. We, we've always thought that the tides are caused by the moon passing um, or the gravitational pull of the moon. What well, We get two high tides a day. You look it up, two high tides a day, so it's not the moon. And if you factor in that water, the salt water in particular, the ocean water is, um, has got salt in it, and that salt creates an electromagnetic pull and an ebb and flow, and there's a lot to learn. Yeah, Thanks. there's a lot to learn. And these guys, the ancients who predicted that, you know, the oceans were and the tides were caused by the moon, that was old school stuff, man. They didn't even have any tests for it. They didn't even travel the world. They didn't even have points um, of reference around the world where other people were actually conducting simultaneous experiments with, um, to ascertain this. Gotcha. It's a very interesting topic. Think about it. 
Think about it. We're trusting people who conducted a test, like a Radicinius conducted a test in Egypt. We trust that, even though it wasn't tested anywhere else in the world. Cool. No worries. Got Thanks for the question. It's a good one. I like it. Appreciate that. Let's see. Appreciate your, let's see, super chat from, let's see. Got just seeing some of my harassment on Twitter. How do I get harassed as a moderator? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't believe, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I rarely do. Like, I get so much, I get, like, I'm honestly so encouraged by so much of the positive I get. Like, it's, it seriously, like, really encourages me. Uh, cool. So much of it's positive. But once in a while, I get crap, and I'm like, I'm the moderator. I don't even take the position. <laughs> but thanks so much. Let's see. Robert Summers, we got that one. Philip A., thanks for your super chat. They said, why can you not see Polaris, Billy? I don't know. Now, I explained that before. They just go back, and it's a perspective. And, you know, why can't I see? Well, come on. It's, yeah. Do you want me to explain it again? Um. For the, no. oh, I don't mind actually. No, <laughs> you can. Um, it's okay. It's just that no if it's really short and pithy, it's just that um, we've got a lot of questions to go through still, too. Oh, wait, well, you can you can answer that one. I wasn't, I wasn't serious. Which one? Sorry, um, the best, that last the one, Polaris? On, yes. Yeah, I believe it's because of, you know, perspective and angular resolution. As I said before, imagine being in the largest warehouse on earth. You're standing in the center of that warehouse. You look up, you expect, you see, you see a light above you. That's Polaris. You walk to the very, very edge of that building. You look up, Polaris won't be there. You have to look over this way to see it. And if you're talking about grand scale here, guys, grand scale, closer stars to what we're being told they are, you know, it, just use that to mold to to fashion another another possibility, right? Gotcha. Doesn't mean you live in a ball just because you can see a star. <laughs> it doesn't mean that. Appreciate that. Let's see. Steve one seven five eight. Thanks for your super chat. They say Billy, no black swan, just a gold plated turkey. <laughs> That's a good one. I like it. <laughs> Space Monkey 7777. Appreciate your super chat. They said so Zig can't answer a lot, but knows it's not round how does that work also how do you accept all the other stuff physics provides like computers billy oh, that's, that's a good one you know computers aren't all built by scientists man you know phones aren't all built, they're built by engineers as a team of designers there's all sorts so no white guy in a white coat is building this stuff um the, you know the guys in garages that started these companies that weren't scientists so let's scrap that one that's that's just silly. What was the first part of the question? The first wait a part minute. Was, wait a minute. Because that's the same of all of science. It's all done by loser guys in their garage who want to just discover stuff. That's the exact same for science and for computers. It, you know, yeah. So we can't use that really, can you? Can you say, uh, I've invented stuff. I'm not a scientist. Do you have to be a scientist to invent stuff? No. 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 So, yeah. So, that, so what was the first part of the question there, James? Because it was two part, two pronged. It was, let's see. It was. So Zig can't answer a lot of questions, yeah, I, but yes. knows it's not round. How does that work, Billy? I um and, and same with same with um Todd. He can't answer a lot of the questions. He doesn't know about a seed, but he thinks it's rare. So yeah, I don't know everything, and I will be the first to admit it. I don't know everything about this world. I haven't even traveled everywhere. How would I know everything? Gotcha. Well, I'll be the first to admit it. But you guys think you you guys think you live on a spinning ball, but you don't have the answers either. So, you know, how far is the sun? Do you know about perihelion and aphelion? I could keep going on and on. I bet you your model will get broken down just as quick because you don't know either. But whether you'll admit it is another thing, and that's what you've got to get to. Pride, yeah. when pride gets in the way of knowledge, you're gonna. You're gonna. Yeah, Tom. All Thanks right. for the question. Andrew Handelsman, thanks for your super chat. Ask Billy why people ask Billy why people lie about the Earth being round. Why would they lie? I don't know if it's a. Why would they lie? So the, I hear a common claim: Why do why, all the scientists lie? I don't think they're all lying. I don't even think they know all the math. I know scientists, friends who were scientists, they didn't know the math. They're now discovering things that I'm teaching them. 
that I'm showing them. Isn't that isn't that funny that they are scientists and I'm showing them stuff? I've got pilot, uh, friends who were pilots who were who thought they were flying over a ball. Now when they look at it, they go, "Hmm, very interesting information." Why would they lie? Why wouldn't they? So was it? Why would they lie, or why wouldn't they tell us? Sorry, James, I should have paid more attention. Gotcha. No, which one? Sorry, James, so I can answer the question for for the. Hold on one sec. I'm like catching up. You you wanted to know what the last one said? Yeah. Did they did they ask why would they lie or why wouldn't they tell us? So yes. Why do people lie about it? Why do they lie about it? I don't. You know. I don't think it's a specific. Why do people lie about it? I think it's a certain group of people who probably just won't tell us because we can't handle the truth. Like Tom. So Tom is one of those people. Maybe. No, I reckon he'll handle it. I reckon he'll be cool with it. <laughs> we just can't handle the fact that the world is flat. It would just destroy everything. Like, oh, actually, it, it no scientist can. It doesn't of. destroy everything. Everything is a big thing. I don't think it's going to destroy that much. I don't think it's going to change the way we drive and you know work. We still have to do a lot of things. It's just going to give us a. I think it'll give us a better perspective of where we live. It'll give us a better, you know, under, it'll give us. You know what it'll do for us? It'll make us to never trust other people for what they say again. Like if if the government shows us, like on TV here when they show us the news, man, and even I bet you where you live, they show you the weather, a weather report, a ball, and they put satellite on top, but it's clearly a cartoon. And if you trust that, that's fine. You can do that. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, the government is super concerned that we trust it. That's definitely, Just, definitely. Tom, really? Tom. It's right, what Tom, the whole world me. government means. Let's the word see. govern mean, government means to control mind. Govern is control and mente is mind. So the whole world go government, the word government in essence means mind control. Yeah, I suppose you know. Of course they Tom. care what, they th what you think. Man, how are they going to get your money? Andrew Handelsman, thanks for your super chat. He asked Billy, oh, we, we read that. Steve1758, thanks for your super chat. They said, Billy, explain Aurora Australis, Aurora Borealis on a flat earth with a small, close sun. There's some sort of discharge happening in the atmosphere. I've looked a little bit into this, but not a great deal because I don't really know. But I know we have noble gases in the sky. You've got neon, xenon, argon. There's five. I can't remember the rest of the other two. But... They react. They react in different ways. So that's what I think is happening. Gotcha. Explain it on a ball. <laughs> yeah, Appreciate anyway. Appreciate that. And thanks so much as well for your super chat from Sarah Pees herself, as she likes to call herself, formerly known as Stupid Whore Energy, very sassy, <laughs> who says, why would you lie about Newton? I trusted you. Or a lore. <laughs> I'm oh, so sorry. It's, oh, man. I'll never leave this one down, will I? Or lore. Thanks for your super chat. You're right. They're they're just, they're nasty. I just, I tell you. Or oh, lore. Don't no worry. They say, for Billy, why is the moon upside down in the southern hemisphere as compared to the northern hemisphere? Cool. So mm. if you get someone, if you put a number six on your ceiling, guess I want to stand over here. See if someone stand on the other side. One's going to be seen a six, one's going to be seen a nine. And that's clearly what's happening. And the moon rotates through the night as well. Go watch it. It's amazing. Oh, that's super interesting. I like it. Amazing. Uh, thanks so much for your super chat. Let's see. Ranger Man 9404. That They say that nursery rhyme is the extent of Billy's astronomy knowledge. Oh, <laughs> come on. I love that Billy laughs. I just love it. <laughs> I have other one, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. I've got some other ones. Come on, I've got better ones than that. You know, I, I appreciate so much that you laugh and you do, you've just, you've got such a joyful spirit that you just laugh Thank it you, off. Jay. I love it. I love it. This is great. It's fun. It is. Uh, sexy Calzone. Thanks for your super chat. Who says ketamine is a hell of a drug? <laughs> let's see let's see yeah, tried it? Billy is high on life okay and ketamine but Andrew Handelsman thanks for your super chat <laughs> Andrew <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't hang out with Brian Cox so I think there's a photo of him online with him snorting some, some of that stuff but no just life for me man it's too early in the day as well that's funny <laughs> I like it appreciate it's that and appreciate uh, Andrew Handelsman thanks for your super chat who says Tom, you're a liar. <laughs> oh, God, leave Tom away. 
Depends Tom! On what. Tom <laughs> I think they're trolling. I don't know for sure, but uh, I'm, I'm still wondering. He said the, the moon rotates. When does the moon rotate? Yeah, watch it. Watch it, yeah, mate. Geez, it, watch it, it appears perfectly night. still. It's per- in the, in the no, sky, no, 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 no. It actually rotates as it traverses the sky, Tom. Watch it, mate. No, it I'm doesn't. Telling you, go out. Okay, it doesn't. Sure. Now you're wrong. Anyway, it doesn't. I've seen it happen. I watch it through the night doing that. But you're saying it doesn't. That's cool. Yeah. But yeah, it Tom. doesn't do it. <laughs> this, is, this is stuff the heliocentric model didn't teach you, Tom. Same with me. I had to learn a lot of this stuff and go, hang on, when I was a kid, they told me that eclipses were caused because of the shadow of Earth's shadow reflecting onto the moon. We know that's wrong now. They've changed the model along the way. So from 1970 or I went to school in the 70s, so from there to now, that the model's changed. Things are changing. They're evolving. The heliocentric model has changed. It was, for, like I said, they all, they thought we, we were doing this, but now we're doing this massive sideways pulling. The sun's going that way and we're actually doing this. And, you know, gotcha. sorry, we're doing this while this is happening and there's all these other four, five orbital motions. Um, and if you look at the math behind it, it's crazy math, mate. Anyway, it gotcha. does happen. Look at it. Tom? Tom? Yeah. Yeah, Tom. Moon rotates. Appreciate that. And let's see. Appreciate uh, next super chat coming in from Papinbala. And also thanks, Cody Davis, for your super chat. We're going to get right to that. But Papinbala first said, what will Tom and his father debate on March 17th? So glad you asked, Papinbala. It's going to be a great one, a terrific debate. As you see on the bottom right of your screen, Tom will be confronting his father. This is truly the Empire Strikes Back, folks. It's going to be a lot of fun. Tom and Steve are going to debate several things. First, Hi, they're Tom. going to debate. <laughs> Wait, what? Hey, sorry. <laughs> what? Sorry, to, inter- sorry what? to interrupt, but it's Tom. Is your dad? Is that your dad, Steve McRae? Is that the guy with the goatee? Or um, so we're not related. James just makes up a. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Sorry, man. I should be gay. Oh, let's see. But I mean, they I'll kind of are. I'll never trust you again. It's like symbolic. You lied. I lo- <laughs> I love you lied to me. Unless so it's the government got me to say that. Next up, we have, <laughs> let's see, what was it? Um, love your playful uh, sense of humor. Good man. Uh, let's see. What was it? Okay, so Tom Jump and Steve McRae, they'll be debating, one, the definition of atheism, which they have notoriously dis- disagreed on. Second, they're going to be debating, oh, yeah, we're going there, Tom. There's no, There's no going back. We're going to debate Tom's epistemic criteria for knowing whether or not Kyle was guilty of stealing the non sequitur show from Steve. Because that was something they discussed before, and Tom was like, "They have to, you have to have a trial and a judge to know anything. And Kyle, no, no, I said, Kyle has to be found guilty, guilty by the whole jury. Otherwise, that's the innocent, only way you can know knowledge. Innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Just basic law. Oh, really? Is that how you know that the Earth is a globe, Tom? Okay. Is that, okay. Is that a law? Now, let's see. So, Well, there was a court case in America that, that was brought up. Zen Garcia, he gets on. I can't remember the complaint. But he, um, Zen had a ten or $20,000 bet to prove that the Earth's a spinning ball. This guy, a Microsoft engineer, took him on. It actually went to court, and the court ruled there was not enough evidence for a spinning ball. How's that, eh? Uh, Very I think it sounds like bullcrap. I think it that was just last good. year, man. Look at everything sounds like bullcrap to the mind that's not ready to learn, man. Yeah, Tom. All right, next up. Yeah, we- Tom. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Or Laura, we're going to get to your super chat. Thanks for that, friend. Uh, first up. Oh yeah. So anyway, those two topics. Well, for sure, talk definition of atheism. Steve also might challenge some of other Tom's other views. Uh, so I don't know for sure if we'll get to the Kyle Curtis thing. By the way, something spooky has happened. I'm not joking about this. I'm dead serious. So if you know of the non sequitur show, I uh, I have no idea what I'm. I all I know is that last time I peeked, the pictures like on the channel have been like changed. So like the like the banner has been changed and the avatar, rather than it being like the nun, it changed to like some guy with a pipe he's smoking a pipe so interesting i don't know what kyle if kyle's trolling steve with that poor steve but um interestingly just kind of spooky that that changed all of a sudden like a couple days ago so cody davis thanks for your super chat who said i'm now convinced it's flat zig's brain <laughs> i don't get it i mean okay i mean i think i get it yeah, it's called me a flat, brain, flat, flat brain. brain your brain yeah. is flat okay good one Although, that's, that's- 
some good science there, wasn't it? Did he actually waste money for that? Did he waste his own money to say that? Man, he could have sent me a private message on that. You put a quarter in Billy. He's, he's coming after you. Okay. Or, Laura, thanks for your super <laughs> chat, who says, thanks for your great non-answer about why the moon is upside down, Billy. Thanks for your great non-answer. They're coming at you. Why is the moon upside down for you, man? Well, how does it work on a heliocentric model? Why does it rotate through the night? And why does the same face of the moon, everyone, regardless to where you are on this ball, you're seeing the same face of the moon. No one has ever seen the dark, the far side of the moon. It's not the dark side. We used to call it the dark side. Um, now it's the far side of the moon. No one's ever seen it. Apparently China landed on there recently. Go look at their footage. If you believe in that, you believe there's a guy who's going to bring you presents at Christmas time and a little bunny brings you Easter eggs. That... <sighs> yeah, Tom still believes that. Anyway. Whatever. Go ahead. Thanks so much. <laughs> Love teasing you, Tom. You're you're great, buddy. All right, let's see. Uh, last or well, we got to or lore. Thanks for that. We had a, one last super chat that just fired in. Appreciate it from Space Monkey seven 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 seven, who said today is all built on theories in physics, like phones and GPS. Same physics says the Earth is round. You cannot accept it. Picky right much. On. So I think they're saying, like, hey, you're picking and choosing. Then they say, the universe has no obligation to be simple for you to understand it, Billy. Oh, is that from Neil deGrasse Tyson's comment? He didn't make, this guy didn't make that up. And round, let's talk about round. Before we get into discussing the, discussing the shape of the earth, why don't we work out objects first? Round is, does not define a spherical object. I can go around and round my neighbourhood. doesn't mean it's a ball. Okay, so let's use spherical instead of round because flat earth is, think the earth is round too or it's got some roundish border ar around it. And when you stand even on a flat um, playing field and you look yeah. around you, so let's think about what we're saying when we're saying round. Round does not mean spherical, everyone. Gotcha. Let's see. Didn't need to let's waste see. your money on me for that one. Next up, let's see, Sassy Billy. We, I thought I saw just one more last thing come in. That's it, folks. I want to say thanks so much for hanging out with us. This is a special edition of Modern Day Debate. You are the only ones, if you're watching live right now, you're the only ones that are going to see this debate for at least a week because I've got to piece it back together. You are one of the faithful. You're, you've been, you've been so awesome that you've hung out, you've hung out with us, even though it, it dropped twice. How embarrassing! I haven't seen that since on Tom's channel. So. We appreciate you hanging with us, folks, that you stuck with us. It's always fun. I honestly hate saying goodbye. I honestly just wish I could hang out here all all night. And Phil, uh, Phil Bunny, that is the kindest thing. If you'd be willing to like put it together for me, because honestly, right now I'm dying, folks. I'm behind on emails. If you've sent me an email requesting a debate, I'm, I'm trying to catch up. I'm working on my doctorate, and I'm teaching a couple of classes, and I'm honestly like, oh, my gosh. I'm honestly like hanging in there right now it's just so busy uh but don't worry folks we're gonna make it we're gonna make it it's gonna be terrific in fact if you haven't seen it as i mentioned live tour coming up this in one week less than a week we are going to be together with tom and his father as you'll see on the bottom right that's going to be exactly well less than now just barely by a few hours less than one week from today also less than one week only six days away David Wood and Matt Dillahunty, we have scheduled to debate. That's going to be super exciting. Thanks so much for that. And next up, appreciate Goku Sun. Thanks for your super chat. They said it dropped twice because you have to pay internet. Ha! Huh. Yes, that's true. But I was trying out something special. I was experimenting, and it was embarrassing. But thanks so much. And yes, yeah, someone's asked well, if I'm getting my doctorate as a gynecologist. No, uh, that's funny. And let's see. I like MD is still using Matt Dillahunty's fat face in the thumbnails. How dare you? Matt has a terrific face. I don't think he, you know, it's, but I, you have to give it. I didn't make the thumbnail. I actually, Taylor made it and I think it looks great. Matt looks great. By the way, you have to give credit to Matt, no matter whether you be Christian, atheist. Matt looks great. He's in great shape. So happy for him on that. And uh, 
we can get a more contemporary picture of Matt for the next thumbnail. We don't know for sure. We're, we're working out the format. It's been a little bit more challenging than I expected to, to figure out the format. And I don't blame it. You know, the, we want the debaters to enjoy the format to the maximal possible level. And so I don't, I don't blame the debaters for wanting to kind of negotiate the best format. So that's in the works. But also want to say thanks so much to our speakers. Couldn't thank them enough. This channel runs on an excellent speakers like these guys who have hung out with us tonight. Thanks so much, Billy and Tom Jump. Thank you, James. Thanks, Tom. It's been great. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to go take a nap now. Yeah, you do that, man. Hope you feel better soon. Our pleasure. Hope you feel better, Tom. And bottom right, Destiny versus Vosh. This might be the biggest live stream we have. That's coming up in one week as well. That's going to be crazy, you guys. That honestly, I'm. A, it's all these debates are going to be terrific, and I haven't mentioned it, but let's see. David Wood will be debating Samuel Nassan on whether or not Christians can mock and criticize unbelievers and their beliefs. What do you think, Billy? Is it pos Is it is it acceptable? Oh, sorry. Say that again. Christians. That's okay. It's <laughs> it's uh, just whether or not Christians can mock and criticize unbelievers and their views. I don't think it's right. <laughs> mocking, you know, especially if you're Christian, you should be mocking, you know. Yeah, Tom. All right. So that with that, I'm just teasing. Somebody in the live chat was like, why is James so mean to Tom? I love Tom. He's terrific. Look at him. He wants to go to sleep. We got to let him go to sleep. Thanks, everybody, for being here. We, uh, we love these speakers. They're linked <laughs> in the description, folks. Check them out. Have a great night. Keep sifting out the reason.